Here is uh, Fox News. Fox and Friends apparently did not get uh, the word that uh, Donald Trump felt like he had gone into the deep end without knowing how to swim and had uh, told the generals, like, I didn't. I didn't think it would turn into a war. I just wanted to, I just wanted the mullahs to think I was cool. And uh, before that happened, apparently Fox and Friends thought the war, uh, we were still down with the war. And uh, here is uh, Fox and Friends, um, Sean Parnell, explaining why we need to get into a massive um, war with Iran, with um a lot, a lot of people dying. I, I, but this, truthfully, should be should not be a surprise to anybody. I feel like we've been at war with Iran for 40 years. Like, I don't like to fight, but if I walk into a bar and a drunk guy starts throwing punches at me, I'm going to fight whether I like it or not. And the fact of the matter is, is that Iran has been killing Americans for 40 years now, and we've really done nothing about it. Who is that idiot? That is Sharn Parnell. Um, the CEO of uh, oh, where's the Sean Parnell? CEO of Branding Freedom. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's now, incredible. Now, to be fair to uh, Sean, he is a uh, retired Army. Uh, he was a captain. He was with the Tenth Mountain Division, so he uh, probably saw a uh, significant amount of fighting. At the very least, I would imagine in Afghanistan, uh, but. He doesn't seem. Uh, I wouldn't make him a general. Let's put it that way. The uh, the whole if there's a drunk guy in a bar and he's going to throw a fight. Is he under uh, the impression it, that Afghanistan's a giant bar? Also, no, I it think would it, be in Iraq. Right. I mean the uh, the war itself, I guess, would be fought uh, at least in parts in Iraq, um, and uh, the idea is that Iran is not just some big uh, drunk guy. And uh, it's not just him who's going to be taking the punches. Um, there's going to be a lot of other uh, civilians who are going to be killed, uh, hundreds of thousands probably, if we're um, lucky to avoid greater casualties. Um, but that's basically what it is. This mentality of like, it's just like happens in a bar when people are drunk. Uh, that's all that war really is. It's just... Like that, but more. Just a little bit uh, well, more. Well, I also like, and I, I mean, this people have been pointing this out about Iran for a while, so this is not, you know, a new point, but it bears repeating. Like, and Tom Cotton did this the other day, right? When he's sitting there with Margaret Hoover, like, it's going to be two strikes, you know, like doing his, like, whatever. The first one and the last yeah, one. Yeah, first one, last one. I'm getting too old for this. You know, like that. I am the danger. Right. Yeah, I am the danger. Well, okay. So if Iran is the equivalent of first strike, last strike, and a fight in a bar fight, then that might contradict the like greatest threat to humanity and the future of America's existence right, right. now. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to decide whether like core geostrategic threat even though they don't even have the most powerful military in the middle east or something they're like yeah we can just go and thrash them a little bit and i mean of course what's incredible is like the answer is obviously somewhere in between of like they're obviously not a threat to us but they are way more sophisticated and capable than iraq and look at how horrific and disastrous iraq was on every level um i would also add that if you're going to use the analogy of a drunk guy in a bar fight, it's the United States that looks a lot more drunk. Getting into fights all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have um, basically these rogue elements that are creating the circumstance for the fight. They're the ones, you know, who are going up and saying, like, hey, buddy. What's with those shoes, you know, or what are you doing here? This is not your bar, you what? know, that type of thing. You think you're going to go to that bar where people share stuff? I'm going to kick oh. your ass before you <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, did you say something? Are you looking at me? Why don't you take a picture? It lasts longer. Yeah. And then, of course, um, uh, you know, Donald Trump has to tell the generals, like, I... I'm afraid of Bolton's mustache. Can you please tell him no, no war, please? They said that if we talked like that, then they would apologize and kiss me and then give me money. But that isn't happening, and now I'm scared. Can you help me, please? 
It's um, I don't know. I, I I can't tell if I feel like oh okay, there is like actually a system here that is um, deeply damaged, or there's actually a system that is at least somewhat rational and working. Like you know, like where you can have a lunatic uh, uh, element in the administration, but there's enough non-lunatics to push back. I can't tell. Well, they're I, all I, lunatics in different ways, right? Yes, but I'm talking like in ways that aren't going to end up killing hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, well, Trump's lunacy is he likes to talk shit on Twitter, but to the degree that he has an ideology where any of us is concerned, he's an isolationist, I think, because war is annoying <laughs> and he'd have to like talk about stuff that's not himself a lot and like, you know what I'm saying? Well, I don't it's know. It's also the he's... repetition. I would have to talk about it every day. I'm also bored of what's that old general I was, MacArthur or whatever. I haven't cited him. Yeah. In MacArthur. Ages. I mean, look, he founded the country. That was great. Those that are was the a olden days. Ago. Yeah, those are the olden days. He chopped I, it. I, I don't think it's accurate to say that uh, that Trump is an isolationist in, in any shape or form. I think it's just that he. Uh, people came to him and said, it's going to hurt your re-election chances to get into a war that you haven't sold the American public on. And I think he's like, oh, OK. I uh, think he's just a guy who literally I don't think he cares one way or another. Um, I think it's just a question of like, what does he think is going to help him at any given point? And I don't think he has. I don't even think that he is. I don't think he thinks about stuff enough to consider himself an isolationist. I don't think that he. Um, even in and terms the pragmatic of like, he's Buchanan an isolationist when Jeb Bush is around. Yeah, I, after the fact, you know, a lot of people think that MacArthur, MacArthur should have gotten credit. But my question is, why did you chop down the cherry tree to begin with? Maybe more people should be asking that question.